Hello and welcome to another episode. I'm Praga, a machine learning engineer at WSO2. Corio is a digital platform as a service that lets companies develop APIs, services, integrations, and manage them easily. In our previous videos, you would have learned about how to work with Corio and certain artificial intelligence features, such as performance estimation, low code suggestions in Corio. These features will enable Corio users to estimate performance of their script even before they deploy them. And also it helps you automatically code predict while you're creating the program. In this video, we will be walking across machine learning operations, also known as ML ops, which work behind the scenes for these AI features, which are available in Corio. Simply ML ops, is an application of DevOps principles for machine learning workflow. Before we dive deeper into the concepts and trends of MLOps, let's take a look at common problems in the general machine learning workflow itself. First, as data scientists, we tend to do a lot of experiments with a set of data. But after a couple of months, we lose track of which models and experiments, what are the accuracies and other metadata which were yielded. Second problem is with time, the data which we have worked would change. More data would have been accumulated or the structure or the distribution of the data itself would have changed. This prompts us to redo the entire experiments we have done so far again. And finally, similarly, we have new experiments which we might have to run. And there could be new problems, problems such as architectural level changes or pre-processing changes, which might be required depending on new versions. So the entire experiments needs to be versioned. ML ops is a great tool to resolve these problems. Now let's take a look at how we solve these problems in Corio with the use of ML ops in three stages, data collection and pre-processing, model training, and finally model deployment. In a typical ML flow, our data from which we would like to build a model from could be either static, meaning they could reside in a database or they could be dynamic, which means they could be coming from a data stream. In a simple case, as data scientists, we take a dump of this data and analyze the quality of it or try to understand the story behind the data. The main problem of such approach is, as I mentioned earlier, is while you take a DB, let's say on 1st of March, by the time you reach 1st of June, the distribution of the data would have changed. This prompts us to redo the entire experiments as well. Hence, we would like to see how to repeatedly do this experiment and the sanity checks in an automated manner. This is where ML ops comes into play. Let's take a deeper dive. When we design ML ops pipeline, we design them to be automatically or manually triggered based on a schedule, or in other words, known as a cruncher. When the pipeline is triggered, it would be designed in a manner to take a dump of the data from the source, create features, etc., which can be versioned and then comes in pre-processing and model train. So we would have a version data and a version model as well. Within the ML ops pipeline, as machine learning engineers, we would typically write test cases and log results as well. As an example, we could look at the distribution of data for a particular commit which is given in this image. And we could create the particular data, features, et cetera, and we could log them. You could also use certain libraries such as Pandas profiling. The library automates the statistical analysis for a given data in a Pandas data frame and publishes the reports. Such reports could be saved and visualized in later dates. In addition to the major application level changes, we could also look for data drifts. In other words, verify the composition of the data itself has changed drastically. After data collection and cleaning, we would typically move on to model training and evaluation. In this space, data scientists, we tend to do great search or hyperparameter tuning for a new data. ML ops could be a powerful tool to version the model as well. In Corio, we version and save our models every two weeks. For each training phase, we get notification. And we also look for training and testing evaluation methods such as accuracies, precision, recall, et cetera. 
After evaluation, the next step is to deploy the model. Our MLOps pipeline is configured in such a manner that we directly deploy our models into Kubernetes clusters we have. Currently, for low-code suggestions feature, we have a human validation in between the model evaluation and deployment to ensure that the model drifts are not happening and the data drifts are significantly lower, while some other features in Corio have a fully automated process. Now we have come to an end of the video. So let's summarize what we are looking so far. We looked at how MLOps tackled the problems facing typical ML workflows, especially in the data collection process. We looked at ways in which we can evaluate data and version them. And finally, we looked at how versioning will help both pre-processing and training complications which may arise during general experiments. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.